Greetings. We came to this hollow ground, the Bronx County building, on Monday, August 4th, 2022, to announce the countdown to our historic event taking place in Africa. As all of you have come to know, for the past 11 months, the Africans in the diaspora, particularly the ones in New York City, have been organizing, strategizing, and mobilizing what we deemed one of the most innovative self-empowerment socio-economic program on the continent. Today is the first day of the last month before we launch this program. Therefore, we wanted to come here on this spot, on this day, at this particular moment, to communicate with the public about our intention about our objectives, about what we are embarking on, which is connecting the continent to its sons and daughters all over the globe. In addition to that, also to open Africa up for the global travelers from wherever they are coming from, for whatever purpose, with whatever interest, we want Africa to open for the global travelers, but primarily for its sons and daughters. Among them are individuals who are the descendants of the innocent Africans stolen and enslaved in the Americas, most of whom have never ever been able to reconnect with their roots. They have not seen their homeland. They have not spoken their language. They have not celebrated their culture. They have been cut off from their roots. Such a program will attempt to reconnect so that these individuals who are completely disconnected from their roots will be reconnected. So that the continent, which is the most resourceful continent in the world, yet the most impoverished continent in the world, that dichotomy will change. When the sons and daughters of Africa who are highly qualified in many different fields, have connected to their roots, the continent and the sons and daughters, the world over, will reclaim their historic leadership one more time. As we all know, Africa is a birthplace of humanity is the cradle of global civilization. It is the birthplace of the religions that we are part of. It is the birthplace of philosophy. It is the birthplace of science. It is the birthplace of culture. It is a birthplace that all the things that we cherish globally found its roots out of. That is Africa, the first continent with first people, yet the continent that suffers from many injustices, from enslavement, from abuse, from oppression, from colonialization, and from the embezzlement of its resources, from corruption, and because of those injustices, followed by ethnic conflict, 
religious conflict, group conflict, to a point where some of the African nations actually practice apartheid. Some European guests who came to Africa and in due time took over and then denied the Africans their right to their nation, their right to their resources, their right to their political power. That took place. That took place among many injustices. So for the past 11 months, the Africans, such as myself, and many other leaders in the diaspora, strategize effective ways in which we can be part of the socio-economic development of the continent and its sons and daughters. And we came up with a program that we believe will be one of the most innovative program. And that program is called Daylight Africa Week. A week long traveling throughout the continent, exploring the continent's resources, meeting with the Africans, studying the Africa, and then connecting with the Africans. And when that happens, individuals who travel and experience and gain understanding will then decide for themselves which avenue would they want to take in their relationship to the continent. Do they want to invest? Do they want to support a child in school? Do they want to establish charitable endeavor? Do they want to buy second homes? Or do they want to contract a marital relationship? Whatever it is that interests them is our goal to facilitate that. Now, let me tell you the difference between Daylight Africa Week and the current trips and traveling to the continent. Almost all, if not all, the existing travel programs are tied to groups, organizations, individuals, and families, meaning personal interests. As wonderful as they may be, they are individually organized. Daylight Africa is a country benefit. It's a society benefit. It's a group benefit. And it is an open platform that does not belong to any particular organization or individual. Every person, including myself, is part of the coordinating leaders. But we don't have the claim to ownership to it. Our job is to make it as effective, as productive, as beneficial as it can be. And every group, including the travel consulting groups, house of worship, and other activists or businesses or NGOs that wants to curve out annual group travel during Daylight Africa, be our guest. Do, do it the way you want to do it. Connect it to the Daylight Africa Week and making sure that people travel to the continent. The more travelers to the continent, the better and more effective the program becomes. Daylight came as a result of one-sided image, distorted image, one-sided narrative, distorted narrative associated globally with the continent. Dark, gloomy, impoverished, conflict-ridden, hopelessness, you name it. That is what the people know about Africa. That's what they associate with the continent. So when we travel to the continent in the last several years, we've seen some of the most majestic venues, some of the most beautiful people, some of the most luxurious venues. We've decided that the world needs to get the entire picture of the continent, not the dark and gloomy reality, but also the daylight of the continent the beauty of the continent, the exoticness of the continent, and also all the noble attributes that are unique to the continent. That is why we say daylight, 
moving from the darkness of night to the dawn of daylight. That's why the program is called Daylight Africa. In addition to the Daylight Africa, we also said we have to also attach transatlantic family reunification, part of it. Why do we do that? Because in 1619, the first known Africans was shipped and arrived in these shores of the United States, 1619. And when those Africans were moved from their homeland, the narrative was they are coming out of the door of no return. These individuals that are being brought to North America, to Europe, will never return back. Therefore, they are coming out of the door of no return. We said those are lies. These individuals, no matter how long it takes, will go back to their homeland. They will go back to their roots. They will reconnect to that which that they belong. That is why we said transatlantic family reunification week. People say door of no return. We said hell no. Doors of return. Wider doors of return. Today in North America, we have close to 50 million African Americans. You go to Latin America, you have close to 20 or more million Afro-Latinos. You go to South America, Brazil alone has about 100 million Africans. The largest concentration of Africans outside of the continent happen to be in Brazil. These are individuals that deserve and are entitled to at least connect to their homeland. Whether they stay or not, that, that may not be the case, but at least they are entitled to their culture, to their roots, to their homeland, to their natural resources, to their dignity, to their honor, and to their history. And that is why we're saying transatlantic family reunification must be a component to Daylight Africa Week so that these individuals who have been disconnected and completely cut off from their roots will find their way back to their homeland. And that component also come up with some demands. We have seven pillars that we're demanding from the African governments to be afforded to the sons and daughters of Africa. These demands will make it almost impossible to differentiate an African immigrant from an African-American or Afro-Caribbean or Afro-Latinos because these demands will make it naturally reconnected as one family living in different global geography, but one family. One family that is connected to its roots, its backgrounds, its homeland, its culture, its uh, siblings, and its comfort zone. We launched that program, that component, at the United Nations in front of the Ark of Return. The Ark of Return. This component was launched there for symbolic reason. Now, let me briefly walk you through what will take place during Daylight Africa Week. Unlike existing programs where people, you know, take advantage of the situations and opportunities, we are not going to be associated with such self-enrichment individuals and corporations. That has been the biggest obstacle for Africa's development. That has been one of the worst situation that prevent Africa to move from one developmental uh, milestone to a next. This is how we're going to do it. We will provide unfettered access to knowledge of the continent for 
those who travel to the continent, unfettered access to knowledge, the knowledge of the environment, the knowledge of the people, the knowledge of the etiquette, and the knowledge of the opportunities available. Once people have unfettered access to that, then they can make an informed decision as to which way to go. And we're doing it free of charge. Nobody will ever pay us a fee. Nobody will ever pay us a fine or nothing. That is the current status quo. We don't want to deal with it. We want people to come and freely benefit from our um, sacrifices. Why do we do that? Well, because that is the only way we move from the brain drain that is killing Africa and also the horrendous socioeconomic conditions of the Afro, I mean, of the, Af uh, the African descent people all over the world. Daylight Africa Week is conceived to be the most innovative self-empowerment program ever conceived by Africans in the diaspora in empowering themselves and reconnecting people to the continent and by doing so, taking the continent to its rightful leadership place. Today is the beginning of our countdown. Today makes it a month before the launching of the historic Daylight Africa. During the week, we will be in Senegal and the Gambia in West Africa. We will meet with those in authority. We will discuss with them ways in which this program can be enhanced, improved, and make it the most viable, the most lucrative program for all the stakeholders. Eight days of intensive interaction, fellowship, sightseeing, forums, visitations, and discovery. Eight most intensive days of reconnecting Africa's sons and daughters to their homeland, to their roots. Eight days that will transform the lives of the participants and by doing so, transform the continent from being stagnant to being very, very progressive in its economic development. Africa is the richest continent. It should be the number one economically. Africans are among the most educated now. We should be innovating, inventing. We should be leading all that we consume with transport and all the services that we need now. And through this program, in due time, that will happen. This is the best contribution that the Africans in the diaspora can make to their people in, in the diaspora as well as to the continent. God gives us the ability and the opportunity. The only thing left is the will, and the will we just have now. Join us from September 2nd to September 10th to be part of Daylight Africa Week. Come to Senegal, come to Gambia, be part of history, be part of the most historic travel to the continent. If you spend a dime, that dime is an investment. If you spend $1,000, it's an investment. You will never ever regret it. Because as we continue to move on, those who were there in the beginning, in the launching, will forever be known as the founding leaders for Daylight Africa Week. With that being said, I want to give thanks to all our diplomats, all our elected officials, all the participants, and all the coordinators and all the supporters and those organizations that have pledged their financial support to making so that this program becomes successful, we say thank you. This is something that is in our hearts because we know it will change lives. Thank you and God bless you. And the countdown now to Daylight Africa Week has just begun. Thank you.